So for those watching online, welcome. This is our fifth candidate for school board trustee. I'd like to officially welcome Mrs. Sylvia Dick to Central Elementary School, presenting to grade five sixes and helping them understand local government and help them participate in the student vote on Friday. So thank you very much for coming. Appreciate thank it. you. I'm delighted to be here. So I understand the first thing you want to know is, what does a school trustee do? Well, I tell you, I could take all day to tell you what a school trustee do, but you're sure not interested in the long one. So I'll give you the short version. There's four things that the legislation says that we're responsible for. Now, the four things are, we write policy. And that's the governing, that's the belief system and how we write policy to give to the superintendent who then makes the rules that she sends to the principal about how we conduct ourselves in the school district. The other one is that we hire the superintendent and the secretary treasurer. These are key roles because the superintendent is in charge of the educational program for the entire school district. She takes care of all of the staff. Make sure everyone's hired, that you have teachers, that you have people that clean your schools and fix things, all of those things. She's in charge of all the other staff in the school district. Then we also have to set a strategic direction. Sounds like a big word, strategic. Anybody know what that means? Anyway, it's a plan. It's a plan, a roadmap of where are we going in the school district. And the roadmap looks at What's happening in the school district today? How are our students doing? Are we serving you well enough? And we talk to teachers, we talk to all of our support staff, we talk to parents, we have community members in, and we have broad discussions around what would you like in the school district? What are we doing well? What aren't we doing well? And what should we do better? So we lay all this out in paper and write up a strategic plan. And this is the last one. And the focus is always students. You're always front and center to everything that we do. And the last strategic plan had four things. Engaging all learners, which is you. Successful transitions, making sure you make it from grade to grade as best as possible. Effective communication, make sure we're talking to each other properly. And technology integration. Technology is the important thing. Everyone has more tools than we've ever had before in schools. And finally, the last thing of the four that we do is do a budget. That's the hardest part, because now we have to figure out what the money that government gives us, which is never enough, and we have to apportion it out to hiring and paying all of our staff, our teachers, our support staff, and then supporting those programs that we have identified will help each and every student be successful. And all those programs cost. So we have to figure out where the money should go to give us the best results for student success. And those are the four things that we, as a school trustee, attend to. That's roles and responsibilities and our boundaries, with things that we cannot change, things we cannot do. But those are the four that cover it. Thank you. And the next question, or do you have any questions about that? Yes. You first? No. Go ahead. Oh, you want him first? Okay. Go ahead. Do you, if I elect you as school trustee, do you think you'd be able to add an extra recess around 130 to 145? You'd like an extra recess? Oh, and I forgot. My name is Dayton. I'm sorry? My name is Dayton. Dayton? Yes. Dayton wants an extra recess. Well, an extra recess is a really difficult thing to do. Because we have issues for how many hours that we of instruction we have to provide you. And we have issues or how long our staff works. So doing an extra recess is a real challenge for us and would be very difficult to do. So you'd have to take it from your lunch hour. So you'd have less lunch hour, more recess. Those are the kinds of trade-offs we'd have to do. But it's not something that I could do by myself as a trustee. It's something that the staff would have to work with the superintendent to see if that's at all possible. Because it's not just about your recess, it's about the work the teachers have to do and the time of instruction that we must supply you. Yes? 
Um, and your name is? Renee. Renee? If I elect you, will you get a one-on-one -on -one electronic for every student in school? Now, what do you mean by one-on-one -on -one electronic? Sort of like one electronic for each student. So do you mean an iPad? Do you mean a computer? What do you mean by electronic? Um, iPad. An iPad. See how important it is to understand because an electronic could be so many things and so we have to be clear about what we want. Can I promise you that? Absolutely not. But I can promise you that in our technology program that we have instituted, we have got more computers in our schools than we've ever had before. We've improved our access points and uh, are working through that. There's still a whole lot of the technology that has to be done. We're not finished. We're getting better lines. Some of our lines aren't working, but we're providing better access. And what we're looking at is using the students' own iPads and their own technology, and then providing some school sets for students who don't have their own. So students can, that have it can bring it to school with their teacher's permission and part of their curriculum. And then the ones that don't have it, there will be a few class sets that are available. So that's the kind of trade-off we do. But we couldn't guarantee it for everyone. And your name? My name is Julie, and if I like to get us a drama music program. Will I get you a drama music program? This is, again, is another issue about where the money goes and how we hire teachers and the programs they provide. Sometimes we're very lucky in that we have teachers who have drama and music skills and we're able to utilize that. Can I promise you a program? No. What I can promise you is that when the, the uh, programs are under review, we always look at that. Because I do believe that music is a key part in elementary schools and we're just not able to do all of that. It's always a priority. We have to have the basic programs covered first and then extra programs. Sadly, that's not always possible. Yes. And your name? My name is Elizabeth, and I love you when you add more books to the library. Books to the library. We do have a program of library book refreshment, and again, this is a, a budgetary item, and so there is there is budget that goes to the schools for libraries, uh, for books. Is it enough? I don't know. Um, I think it's something that the teachers send out and let us know what kind of, of books they need and what kind of budget we have to cover it. Okay, so uh, five questions, I think so. Okay, so Mrs. Dick, thank you for answering those great questions, um, so, so eloquently. Um, now, to help the kids decide who to vote for, um, what, could you, what would you bring to the role of school trustee if elected? Well, the, the, the key things that I bring, number one, I'm a very good listener. So when I hear the things that are, are problematic in the school system, I listen carefully to what people are saying and try to work together with other people to find solutions to the issues of why we don't have drama in your elementary schools. We try to find solutions. And the other part, I look at parent involvement, student achievement, and effective governance. Governance I covered already for you, that's the role of the trustee, is to make sure we do all those things well. Parent involvement is that, did you know that before 1989, parent advisory councils didn't even exist? So I worked very hard with the legislation, and we brought parent advisory councils into all the schools across the entire province. So your parents have a role in this school and have a voice in this school, and that's really important because your parents are your first educators, and it's very important teamwork between your parents, your teacher, and yourself as how to how well you do in your studies and in your work. The other one is uh, the um, student achievement. We always have to keep our eye on how well are you doing? What kind of help do you need? Are we getting better? Are your marks getting better? Aren't they getting better? Why aren't they getting better? Are you working hard enough? And what do we have to do to help you get better in your studies, to be more successful? Because it's so important that you learn your life is all the better for it. The more education you have, the better you do, the better and more successful life you will have. So that's really important. The three things, parent involvement, student achievement, that's you, and, uh, and then effective governance. A little dry. Thank you so much. I actually have water for you. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Anything else that you'd like to know?
Um, there is one more thing, Mrs. Dick, to try and help these kids kind of condense everything you've said into one manageable thing. If re-elected this term, what is something that you're passionate about and planning to champion during this next term? One of the key things that we're finding is that government isn't keeping up with the money that it takes to fund all of the things that we would like to do, like drama programs, books in the library. And they're doing that by not keeping the money up for costs that we can't control. If the hydro costs go up, if the gas for our school buses go up, the budget for our school doesn't go up. And that's a problem. So we have less money to pay for books, to pay for programs, and that's an area that we really have to work with government to let them know it is not acceptable. Public education needs to be funded, not exorbitantly, but certainly to look at the cost that we cannot control. And we manage it the very best that we can, but it doesn't go as far as it should. Mrs. Dick, I mean, thank you so much for coming in and um, helping our kids understand that, first of all, what active citizenship is. So when these kids grow up, when given the opportunity to exercise their voice, that um, we're kind of prepping them for that and also help them understand local government. Thank you. It's an honor to have you. Thank, thank you, you so much for letting me come. Yes. And make sure to tell your parents to vote. It's very important. Central Elementary, could we please give a round of applause to our guests? Thank <laughs> you.